So if you hear any very, very loud noises during this interview, that would be Ben's apartment. For you, so. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going to town on it. Um, first of all, I've been watching the show since season one, day one. I'm obsessed with both of you. You're the real OGs of this show. Um, so how fun is it to kind of watch back and not have to be a part of the drama that goes on? It is the best. It is ideal. Um, I gotta say, I'm really enjoying the show. I see why people like it so much. And I like it even better sitting on a couch, drinking a glass of wine. This is like the best way to watch Below Deck, I'm realizing. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Ben? Yeah. It's, um, I, I love it. It's uh, usually uh, Below Deck, when I watch it, it gives me a lot of anxiety because I'm just kind of like right there. For whatever reason, you can never take me off the boat. But I think Galley Talk has kind of taken me off the boat. Yeah. And I've been able to internalize and deal with the anxiety by way of galley talk and sort of, you know, talking about my feelings and how I feel about this. And it's, 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 it's better because usually I feel like I'm kind of trapped there with them. And this way I'm sort of more like a conduit. So it's, it's good times. I love it. Fun and healing. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. <laughs> um, under what circumstances would you two return to the boat and return to the show? What would happen? If someone had a, a gun in my head, maybe I would. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> For me, it would take a lot of money. It would have to be there. You know, I think I would take a, I take a page out of Ben's book. There was a couple seasons where he would come in as the save the day guy for like yeah, one part, for yeah. one charter, maybe two. You know, that's the only way I would ever consider. Wow. Okay. Okay. So it you guys is. are really, really done. Really moved on. So let's talk about oh, this. No, I mean, it's always yeah. liber it's it's always liberating to save a season. You come in, you're fresh faced. You've got an upper hand on everyone. Yeah. You don't have to form relationships. You don't have to notice how other relationships have formed. This all just you know add you know leads to anxiety and you know a lot more going up on your head. So um, you know, it's 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 great saving the day, but um, I, I I think the galley talk we're we're very comfortable there, very comfortable. Yeah. The mimosas are, are flowing, and the, the sushi is being delivered. It's a, it's a just a it's a it's a charmed life, darling. Charmed. Yes, yes. you guys have great. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have to talk about Chef Matthew. I've been dying to know your your opinions on him. Uh, for one. Do you think he should have been fired, Ben? I think he fired himself. And I, I think that, yeah, I, I, I don't think people actually get fired. I think people fire themselves. And I think he was worthy of having fired himself a couple of times. Um, Sandy, you know, she's being a very diplomatic boss. She's really trying with him. And, uh, and I really hope it works out. It's an interesting manage, uh, managerial skill. Um, she's very zen and she's, you know, got a, obviously a very big heart. So I really hope it works out. But personally, I probably would have let him go personally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you think he understood the workload of being a yacht chef? No, I don't yeah. think he did, which is interesting. Like, I think Ben has said it before, like, I'm not sure how much experience on yachts he has because he seems surprised that he needs to make the food for the crew. Right. They should yeah. be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Was, he, was crew food ever like an, a thing that you wouldn't do, Ben? Or did you always do that? You you have to. You yeah. know, um, you know, with the below deck with the below deck um program, you know, if I can break the fourth wall, it usually when we drop off charter, you know, because we have interviewing schedules and all of the rest of it, quite often you know, there is a support, like a little bit, you know, crew lunch will be brought in, crew dinner will be brought in, that type of thing. But when guests are on, that's kind of a given. You, I mean, yeah. if you're not making food, I mean, the crew are not making the food. So, I mean, they have to eat. So, I mean, it's an integral part, you know, I mean, you need sustenance and fuel. I mean, deckies are burning a lot of calories. So are stewardesses, everyone's burning a lot of calories. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a given. Yeah. How, how hard was it to watch that sous chef come in and watch uh, her and the crew make that food the first night? Oh, that was hysterical. 
Yeah, um, with the lobsters and that. Yeah, that, that yeah. was genius. Um, <laughs> I think we all fell in love with David at that point. Um, you know, he was trying to do the humane thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know, no, it's quite funny because they were looking it up and yeah, you've got to get the, oh, the no. first vertebrae oh, and then no. just literally cut its whole head, you know, yeah. Right, yeah. right down the middle. Um, so uh, another way of doing it is you can actually freeze them. Um, and they, they will die. <laughs> they will die. Great. <laughs> well, now we uh, all know. That's, that's a more it. humane uh, look at it. But uh, yeah, I, I appreciate David. I thought that was a really endearing scene. So sh hats off, David. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kate, how do you think Katie, uh, Katie Flood handled the Lexi situation? And how would you have done it differently? I think the big mistake that Katie has made, she has let Lexi know that, you know, she's scared of her and like she's kind of walking on eggshells around Lexi. I don't know how Lexi did it, but she has managed to like act however she wants while have everyone tiptoeing around her bad behavior. Um, so I certainly would not have been as kind or patient with Lexi's behavior. Yeah. Do you think, um, Captain Sandy was hard on Hannah last season and too easy on Lexi. Um, I think that those are two different situations. I mean, I don't think that Lexi has um, had anything you know, illegal on board and that's a totally different situation. But I think that Sandy also is not completely aware of how bad for morale Lexi's behavior truly is. Yeah, yeah. How do you, how involved do you think a chief stew should be on stuff that happens during a drunk night out? Yeah, I didn't really understand that either where Katie was getting involved because she was the chief stew. I think if you, it is off the clock, every I'm not in charge of anybody's drunk behavior except for my own, thank you very much. I don't want that extra job, frankly. Yeah. yeah. Either I think you either you go to bed or you send them to bed. If they don't go to bed, then you go to bed. Yeah. I think that's the deal, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So do you, I, it sounds pretty obvious, but do you think Lexi should have been given that second chance, or would she have been out if she was on your team? I just don't think this is for Lexi. I don't think she's great. You know, working on yachts is uh, long hours, and it's. Some of it's hard work, but one of the most difficult things about it is the learning to live in small spaces with other humans and being socially aware and being aware of how your actions affect others. And for that reason, I just don't think this is the situation best suited for Lexi. Yeah, for that reason, she's out. <laughs> um, Malia as a bosun, how do you both think you would have gotten along with her if she was your bosun? I mean, it's a different department. Um, we we would outrank Malia because uh, right. she's a bosun. Mm -hmm. So she'd have to watch her bloody P's and Q's, wouldn't you, Malia? <laughs> I mean, Show I... some bloody respect around here. I expect a salute. 8 a.m. sharp. I think that it would be great because Malia <laughs> <laughs> by the book. Uh... Yeah. She's very by the book. She respects hierarchy. So that would be great for us because we would outrank her. Perfect. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Malia, we've seen her go through a pretty rough boatmance with her ex Tom. Um, you know, you guys have both had your fair share of boatmances. Do you do you think it's harder to date someone on the same boat as you, or to do the long distance yachty relationship? I don't think long distance works out. To be honest, I've, I, and I think it actually is a is a big hindrance. I mean, I've known people to have boyfriends on other boats in other parts of the world and you know and i've pro i've wanted to make out with them probably and um and it was always just such a shame and then they reunite finally and break up and i'm like <laughs> see i told you <laughs> so <laughs> Right? I, I mean, you're working on a boat, that is your entire universe. The pe like, people you're working with for those six weeks, that is your entire world. So yeah. if, if your head is somewhere else or your heart is somewhere else, it's really not great. Like, you know, just have fun with the ones you're with. Yeah. Even if it's only for six weeks. Totally. Exactly. And, and it's very stressful. And sometimes like human contact really helps, you know. Uh, when you're just so stressed out, it's, I don't know, it's weird. You kind of, 
you're very vulnerable and you know, I mean, it's nice to have a hug here and there, you know? Yeah. I yeah. don't know, I'm just a big baby, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's human contact is good. Um, are you both single right now? I'm, I'm not actually. I've, I've, I've had a girlfriend for a couple of years now. She's okay, I was in short. Lovely. Okay. So how is how is that going? Very well, thank you. Yeah, um, Kate's from very good friends with Kiara, and we all live in the same building. Um, and wow. you know, I, I I love her. She's uh, she's she's great for me. You're in the same building. Why why aren't you doing Zoom together? Well, because I'm not actually in the same building right now because okay. my place is being gut ran out. So I'm in my brother's apartment in Miami down the road. Nice. So if you hear any very, very loud noises during this interview, that would be Ben's apartment for you. <laughs> so, so you know. Yeah, they're, they're going to town on it. Do, does Kiara, uh, it doesn't sound like it, but does she get jealous? Did she get jealous at all of your close relationship with Kate? You guys are, are so close. Well, um, I had, obviously it was deserved of a very candid conversation, which we had, and, and I think Kiara understands, and uh, I don't think she feels threatened by it. You know, I mean, I mean Kiara, Kate's a very strong person, um, you know, so uh, as, as am I, I, I feel like we're both Capricorns, we're fiercely independent, and, um, and and, uh, and Kiara requires a little bit more nurturing. So I think Kate's been amazing through the process, and uh, and I think we, you know, we, we we share a lot of time together, and we have a lot of fun together, and and, and that's it, really. Do you, do you talk about the future and wanting to start a family at all with Kiara? I try to avoid that at all costs, but um, it could be inevitable. Okay, okay. Do you want kids? Yeah, I mean, why not, right? I mean, if I'm gonna do it, I may as well do it now. Um, I know it's gonna be a pain in the ass. My brother's going through it right now. He has a, an, a, an approaching one-year-old. Um, it's it's not easy, but you know, it's, it, it could be a beautiful thing. So we'll see, I'm definitely open to it. I haven't quite got my head around it because I'm so bloody busy, but um, we'll see. I, I, I know it's gonna come with probably great joy and uh, also at the same time uh, a, a lot of problems and a lot of stress so I, I don't know I think it's probably like anything in life uh, relativity yeah yeah you might be able to tell you might be able to hear mine right now she's seven months old and it, it is stressful she's in oh. I put her two rooms over and I can still hear her <laughs> anyway how about, how about you Kate um, are you enjoying the single life are you looking for someone right now what's what's your status you know, I had a great date last night. Okay. Hey! <laughs> and after now that I'm in Florida, um, I'm getting back into the dating world quite a bit after the pandemic year of not. So it's great. It's fun. I, uh, I had a great time last night. Okay. Okay. That's good. Nice, Kate. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Um, what are you both? I know, uh, Ben, you have a catering business. What are you both doing right now besides Galley Talk? I've been cook. I've been. I'm just fiercely busy. I just spent two weeks in Montana. I did 14 dinners. I think I cooked the night prior. I came back to Fort Lauderdale. I had one day off. Then I shot galley tour. Got on a plane. Cooked the next day in Cape Cod. Spent a couple of days with my family. And now we came in last night. And I'm doing this. And I cook tomorrow. So I mean, yeah. I mean, as when I say I'm busy, I'm very busy. So. Um, but it's, it's all good. Um, construction doesn't grow on trees either. Um, I can't even, I, I think I went over budget about three months ago on my apartment. So um, we just got to keep writing those damn checks, keep making it happen, keep making it rain. You know, that's what we do. Do you ever um, cook for Kiara when you get home or are you like, nope, you can cook? Yeah, I, I do. I, I do cook. I, I cook for people, but you know, not at that level, not at that real fine dining all day kind of craziness. But you know, I mean, I, I love to cook simple stuff. I love steaks. I like, you know, just a nice piece of fish, lobster. I, I just like really good food done well personally. Uh, but I don't cook it like a very high, like fine dining level for, for other people, unless they're, unless I'm getting paid, basically. <laughs> but I will say even Ben's like easiest 
job meal is still better than most people's. You know, it's going to be amazing, even if it's just a simple pasta dish. Oh, thank you, Kay. Thank you. She wants to come over for dinner this week. <laughs> she, yeah. I'm hungry. Well, I, apparently I owe everyone dinner in my building because um, it's been a nice. very, very noisy experience for them. And I'm not even there, so I feel even even worse about it. I think we're going to have to do some kind of cocktail party, Kate. I, I, I mean, I'm invited, but I'm not working it. I've been, I'm the guest. No, 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 I, I wasn't saying that. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I wasn't. I'll, You're going to be a guest. Don't worry. Uh, you know, I'll help you. Okay, and Kate, cool. how, about, how about you? What are you, what are you doing right now since um, the show? Uh, so I have my first chief stew ever. She started a very luxury destination wedding business in the Florida Keys. And, um, you know, she taught me the ropes on yachts and now she needs help. So I'm helping her out a little bit. I love that. What better place to be than the Keys? Beautiful, it really is. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I know you left chat room. We've already spoken to you about it. Um, now that Hannah announced that she's leaving, would you ever go back to that show? No, I think uh, that ship has also sailed. You know, I was so happy to be so involved with the creation of it and the beginning of it, but I think that it's found its groove. And I think that Portia and Giselle are really fantastic anchors for the show. And I look forward to see who they add to the mix. I think MJ from Shaw's would be amazing, um, but I, I'm looking forward to see who uh, fills those seats. Have you spoken to Hannah at all? No, I haven't. You know, she's busy on that uh, comedy tour. So no, I haven't. Okay. Um, just a few fun questions about the boat. Who is the most famous person you guys have ever had on a yacht before? Uh, Chef Ben Robinson. Hey, stop it. Kate Chastain, big time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kate, Kate's had Leo, you yeah, know, good old Leo. You had yeah. Leo DiCaprio on a yacht? I did in St. Barts. He's very handsome. Yeah. Ben doesn't talk a lot, very quiet. What did he request? What did he drink? He just came, um, oh gosh, this was like over 10 years ago. I'm sure he was drinking wine at the time. Um, he just came over for a dinner with the yacht owners. They met him out on St. Bart's and invited him on for one dinner. And he just came, he was polite. That's a dream. That's a dream. How about you, Ben? Uh, honestly, the funny thing is, is everyone thinks that yachtings and, Pete and yacht owners are all celebrities. It's really not the case. Celebrities can't actually afford yachts. Um, but I worked for Jim Clark on Athena. It was the biggest sailing yacht in the world. Um, that was a while back. I was 28. And he founded Netscape. So he invented the internet. So yeah. I don't know. That's pretty famous, right? I guess. Yeah, that's pretty I love it. Right. I love his work. <laughs> yeah. Big fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can all relate to that. Yeah, yeah I've met the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the craziest request that you've ever received on Charter? Um, I guess one yacht owner's wife, they were having a large party in San Tropez and she wanted all of these decorative pencils. I'm sure they're very expensive, but sh uh, sharpened to the exact same length. So here I was, college degree in the Mediterranean Ocean, saying, how did my life take this turn where I my job is to sharpen 100 pencils? That wow. <laughs> That's insane. How about, how about you, Ben? I, I had a guy, and, and you know how much I love breakfast. I'm always <laughs> in such a zen mood, you know? Um, so I had one guy, he, he demanded, um, he wanted uh, soft boiled, peeled, peeled soft boiled eggs. And uh, by the way, it's a pain in the ass. I think it took me about four goes to get the damn thing. Finally, I got it and we delivered it to him. And the main charter guest was like, you can't peel a soft boiled egg. What the hell are you asking him for? 
So uh, I had to chill it down and <laughs> and then I reheated it. It was just, it was just, it was crazy. So uh, anyone out there, if you want to peel a soft board egg, go for it. Uh, it's not easy though. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass for me. Also a wedding cake in two hours, three hours notice on the first season of Below Deck. That was a bit obnoxious. Yes, yes. You guys always get pissed off about the wedding cakes. It makes me laugh. Well, it's not easy. Wedding oh. cakes, by the way, take two weeks. Yeah. You have to have to <laughs> not two hours. <laughs> uh, have you guys seen, it just came out in the news yesterday, that Lauren Cohen, who was a stew, is now J-Lo's assistant. She's on vacation with Ben Affleck and J-Lo right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I actually had heard that a couple weeks ago, and I really love Lauren Cohen. Actually, I met her through Ben a few years ago. Oh. And she's lovely. I'm so happy for her. She really is. I can see her doing very well at that job. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy for her. She's a good girl. 